Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be doing a massive color correction from burgundy to honey blonde. Here's a picture of the color that we're removing. I did this color on my client a couple months back and now she's ready to go blonde for the summer. So you guys will be seeing two sessions, also known as two appointments in this video. This was not all done in the same appointment. The reasoning for that is because red is such a dominant color in the hair and in order to take my client from one extreme to another without breakage, we need multiple appointments. So the first step is going to be to try to remove as much of the red as possible. I'm doing this with a Matrix So Coat Color Eraser. This is not bleach, but it's a color extractor. So um, you want to do that when you do vibrant colors like reds or any type of corrective color really. You don't want to jump to bleach right away because you're most likely going to be bleaching or lightening the hair later on. So this solution is just mixed with a little bit of water and a lot of it is manual work. So you'll see that I'm kind of rubbing my hands between the hair because when I do that it actually lifts the color off which is pretty cool. Side note, this video is a little bit more sped up than my other videos. That's because I tried to fit two appointments into a 20 minute time frame so please bear with me. So you may notice that I didn't put the remover on the roots and that's because that's our new growth. I'm only trying to strip the red out. If you look closely you can kind of see that it's starting to take on a caramel tone so the remover is working. So I'm just resaturating a little bit because all the manipulation has caused the product to dry out a little bit. So after that, I'm just going to put a plastic cap on her head just to see if I can get a little bit more lift by using the natural heat from her scalp. I let that solution sit on her hair for another 30 minutes and then I shampooed it and blow dried it and this is what we got. It actually stripped out a pretty decent amount of that burgundy, except you still can see a little bit of that towards the root in that mid shaft area. So this time I'm resaturating, but only on the burgundy section, not on the ends because they already got light enough. So I'm using that same manipulation technique to see if I can get any more of that burgundy to budge. It's 
so after two color removers this is what we got and I would say it looks pretty good there is still a little bit of burgundy in there but that can be corrected with permanent color so that's where I'm going with this next so I can't remember what I used for this because this session was probably about two months ago but if I were to take a wild guess I probably use something with green so if you go back to the color wheel um, green cancels out red so I probably did a combination of L'Oreal Anoa 5NGR and maybe half 6N. Pretty sure that's what I would have used in the situation. So I'm just doing a basic root touch up and then I'm taking a brush to kind of blend down the rest. Also I probably did this with 10 volume. I didn't use 20 only because I don't need lift. I need deposit and I'm just trying to cover up that mid red shaft. If I had too much lift I might expose too much of that red pigment and then we would have a bright fiery mid shaft and that wouldn't look right. So after the root color, I'm just going back to the basics and I'm just doing a basic highlight low light and you guys have probably seen me do this technique in other videos, but I basically take a chunky weave, I'll split the top section up and then maybe put a low light at the bottom, put that in a foil and then on the top part I will probably put a highlight in a foil. So what this technique allows me to do is add in brightness and depth at the same time. Again, I don't really remember my formulas for this session, but if I had to guess for the low light, I probably did L'Oreal de Richesse, half 7N, half 8GB with 9 volume. And then for the lightener, I probably did L'Oreal Platinum, the clay lightener that I typically use with 20 volume. I am taking chunkier sections because my client tends to wear her hair curly most of the time. She has this really pretty loose curl and if I were to make the sections too fine and too thin, when her hair air dries curly, you wouldn't really see any of the color that I put in. It would look like tiny little slivers of blonde. But I'm also still being careful to blend my lightener too. Um, just because the sections are chunky doesn't mean it has to look chunky and choppy when it's all done. Also when it comes to highlighting with a root touch up on at the same time, I do like to take my foil comb and kind of scrape off the excess. It's okay to put the lightener against the color, but you do want to make sure there's as little color as possible when you apply that lightener. And the reason for that is because you don't want any lines of demarcation at the end. This is what she's looking like after all the foils are in. I did try to put in as many foils as possible just to get her to a consistent tone. All right, and here we are at the shampoo bowl. As you guys can see, yep, she still has some of that reddish orange tone in there. And we did everything we could at this point without compromising the integrity of her hair. So in a situation like this, I just say if you can't beat them, join them. I'm going to tone her with a coppery tone. I do remember the formula. I believe it was L'Oreal Deolite 7 CCC and 9 volume. My reasoning for this is because in the future we are going for a honey blonde. Copper is already in that family. So the next time I lighten her, obviously it's going to get even lighter and it'll set us up for success in the future. 
at this point I didn't want to put any more strain on her hair we don't have to we're already close to what we need it to be so it's okay for her to go you know about six weeks with a little bit warmer of a color than she's aiming for I would much rather that than to ruin the integrity of her hair just for a color it's not worth it corrective color can be extremely unpredictable it all depends on how the client's hair reacts with the removal process. This is why it can take multiple sessions to achieve your goal. And these are the results. It's actually really pretty. It ended up being a very warm honey blonde, but we weren't mad at it because that's the tonal family we were going for anyway. And hey, if we can get lighter next time, cool. We actually got a decent amount of that red out. All right, time for session two. So this is about six weeks after that last color and it actually faded out pretty nicely. Because I used a neutralizing formula on her roots, it eliminated a lot of that red tone that was there and now we're left with a nice brown tone. As for the ends, there's no surprise that they faded so nicely because even when we did the color remover, we got pretty much all of the red out. By the way, the integrity of her hair is still good, but I do make my curly haired clients come with their hair clean and blow dried. It just makes it easier for me to apply the color, so that's why her hair looks like that. Alright, so let's get into session two. So for her root formula, I'm using L'Oreal Anoa a quarter 5 BGR, a quarter 6M, and a quarter 6N with 20 volume using 20 volume because she did have some new growth and now I'm trying to match that new growth to the darker section that was there before. For her low light I'm going to be using L'Oreal de Richesse half 7 GRV half 7 N and 9 volume. You may have noticed that I did throw some warm tones back into the formula because it's safe now. I wouldn't have done that if she still had a whole lot of red because Honey Blonde is still a warm tone you don't want to completely drab it out so the formula for her roots is going to be a really nice kind of chestnut brown. Same thing for the low light. But I'm not going too crazy on the low lights this time. I did put them in last time and this time I'm just going to be putting them in the spots where it's too blonde and it doesn't have enough dimension. So for the low lights there's no technique to that. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So I sectioned out the bottom half to give her a little bit of depth. We're doing a partial foil this time because her hair is pretty much on the verge of what we need it to be. So now that we got a lot of that red stripped out, I am going to go higher up to the scalp and just do traditional foils. So I'm taking the diagonal back sections and I'm doing slices, but I'm not dragging that lightener all the way down because those ends are already light enough. Since her color faded out so nicely, this is all just touch-up work. This time I'm doing slices instead of weaves. It's just another technique to give you a big pop of color. Like I was saying earlier, her hair is curly, so I kind of like to do bolder patterns so that she can see it when it's curly or straight. However, at the top of that section, I do like to do a weave as my final foil. It just helps with the blending. So for her hairline, I'm pretty much doing the same technique, but I did take out that very, very, very first section with all the baby hairs because you don't want to highlight those. And then my slice is a little bit thinner in the front of her face because you don't want that to be chunky. You want it to look very natural.
Also, anytime you color textured hair, saturation is key. You would hate to do all of this work and then it turns out blotchy because you didn't put enough product. So I am weaving this first section on the sides just for more blend. If she puts it in a ponytail, you don't want to see any lines or stripes. Alright, so for our toner, we're not really trying to cancel anything out anymore. We're just trying to make sure we have control so things don't get too brassy. So my toner ended up being L'Oreal Dia Richesse half 8GB and half 9NV with 9 volume. So after I rinsed out the toner, I gave her a nice deep conditioning treatment. We did the Paul Mitchell Care Triplex treatment and that is just a protein based treatment. It prevents breakage and it makes the hair really soft and shiny. So after the treatment, I just did a typical silk press. I'm straightening it first because she's going to want beach waves after this. And yeah, can't wait for you guys to see the results. And here are the results. It's a gorgeous, dimensional, blended honey blonde. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate anyone that supports my channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share.